Hi guys, Dr. V here, richer Asian American. I was broke at 39, retired at 45. I wanna help you do that. Today in the um, comment section in the description, I added a link to a summary of the richest man in Babylon. Now my mentor who helped me get me through my stuff through via YouTube videos is Jim Rohn. He always talks about how the book, The Richest Man in Babylon changed his life. So I quickly, I was so broke y'all. I was so broke, I couldn't even afford to buy The Richest Man in Babylon. Um, instead, if you will just go on Google and you just type in Richest Man in Babylon, you can find websites where they have created the PDF, you can download it, you can read it online, and it's totally free. Now with YouTube, you can watch a summary video or you can hear the audio book, all for free. So what I wanted to do is uh, talk about some key lessons um, that are from Richest Man in Babylon, but more specifically, I wanna give you a little Dr. V spin to, to really make it actionable, all right? So number one, and some of these things you've heard throughout your life, and I'm not gonna spend too much time on them, but number one is pay yourself first. And everybody knows this, right? And the average person, and you're not average because you're watching this channel, so you can't be average. But the average person, and a comment if this is you, put a one in the comment section if this is you. You say, of course I pay myself first, every other Friday. <laughs> what do you mean, Dr. V? I mean, my, my boss gives me, my, I work for this company, and the money comes to me, right? So, so here's your job, they give you money, and we'll call it we'll call it three dollar signs right here's your money and it goes into your bank my bank right and you want to say so your, your bank account goes from let's say it goes from you had a you had a bad month you had a bad two weeks and you had to spend all your money it's ten dollars give me an amen if this is you and then your check comes in and let's say it's fifteen hundred dollars uh, every two weeks, $3,000. Let's just make it 2000 make the math easy, right? So now it goes from, and we'll call, call it $2,000 times two, right? $4,000 a month, right? So now it goes um, from $10 to 2010. So the average person would think, Dr. V, didn't I just pay myself first? See, they stop right there. So the average person, stops thinking at this point, right? Because in their mind, they're like, it's my money. It's in my bank account. I just paid myself first, motherfucker. What you talking about? And I'll go, no, you didn't. All right, so let's talk about above average. This is you guys, all right? If you're an above average person, you realize, holy shit, this $2,010 is going to my landlord, all right? I'm gonna call this rent, but if you're really smart, you realize that this is the landlord, okay? And uh, this goes to utilities. So that means it goes to the companies. Okay, and what else? What other, what, other, what other stuff you have? Maybe car payment, car, right? So this goes to the bank that owns your, owns your, your car, all right? Um, and then let's say, let's say your kid, Dr. V, my daughter needed new clothes. My kids need new clothes. So this goes to the stores. Okay, we can stop there, but you get the idea. It could go to hospital bills, Dr. V, you know, you make it sound like I just sit there and spend money frivolously. You don't understand. I had, I had breast cancer. I had a, I broke my leg. I broke my, yeah, I know that's called life, dude. That's called life. I get it. We all have that. I have that, you know, but the idea is still the same. It doesn't matter what you name it. You could be very fucking honorable. And in fact, just to, so you're not so bugged, 
Uh, I'll just put medical on here because you know you're you're a God fearing person that takes care you know um, of people and 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 you're going to heaven, but you still have all these bills you can't handle, right? I get it. Okay, fine. My point is this: you see the flow. The flow did not stop at your bank, and I have an aha. Uh -huh. It just went right from here phew, out. And so quickly, this 2010, what happens? Goes back down to $10. Okay? So you didn't pay yourself first. And I'm being nice here, motherfucker. I'm being nice and saying you're paying these people before, after you get the money. Some of y'all are so bad off, you're paying all these people before you get the money. Amen? And you're like, you know, checks in the mail, checks in the mail. Uh, I'm going to charge it on my credit card, then I'll pay off my credit card. You know, so maybe you're paying off all of the, you're paying all this stuff off with credit, and then you're hoping to use this to pay the credit card bill. That's also a strategy, a strategy of the poor, a, st a strategy of the broke. So richest man Babylon says, no, 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 you got to get this straight. You got to pay yourself first. And we're going to talk about how you do that. Number two, um, and this one you heard from all of the financial guru people on TV. Save 10%. Dr. V says, Dr. V says, WTF, what the fuck are you saving? I mean, you got $10 in the bank account. If you're lucky, what's the average person saving, man? All right, so let's just do the math. If it's $2,000, I'll do this for you guys, right? You move the decimal place over, 10% of $2,000 is $200. So out of every check, you'd be should, you should be saving $200 times two, which would equal $400 per month, which would equal $4,800 per year. So, if you if you if you if you make uh, roughly forty eight thousand, right? This is about an average American, right? Ha Let me ask you this question: Has your savings account gone up forty eight hundred dollars this last year? Yeah, it sure did, Doctor V. I saved my stimulus. Okay, I'm I'm not talking about the free government money. I'm not talking about stimulus. Let's just take twenty twenty out of it. How about 2019? Did it go up 2000, in 2019 by 4,800? No. No, it didn't. And let me ask you this question, okay? Because this is the hard-hitting shit Dr. V gives you, right? Blue is above average, okay? How long have you been working? Years working. Right? How many years have you been working? How old are you? I'm 45. I've been I've been working since I was 15, Dr. V. I was knee high or grasshopper. I was blah blah blah. All right, but that's even worse. Like you're still broke. You've been working all your life and you're still broke. How much do you have? All right. Well, it, well back in the day, I was only getting paid two dollars an hour. That was minimum wage back then, Dr. V. But you don't know blah, blah blah blah, right? But let's just say let's say let's say we can just take this number and average it. Just say average out. When you were younger, maybe, you know, instead of getting paid $50,000 a year, we, sure, you were only getting paid $25,000 a year, and then you got 50000 and now you're getting paid seventy-five, eighty, ninety, hundred $100,000 a year. That's fine. Average it out. We'll just call it, you know, you could have had the potential to save $4,800 a year. So how many years have you been working? You know, let's say you went to college and yada, yada, yada. Let's say 25 to 65. 40 years. Let's, let's just... Let's just, for this, you can do the math for yourself. We'll call from 25 years old to 65 years old equals 40 years. So now all you got to do is multiply these together, right? Zero, zero, three zeros, 32, 3, 16, 100, 19. So $192,000. <clears> Are you 65 years old and do you have $192,000 in the bank? I will tell you, half of the 65 year olds do not. You do not. 
But Dr. V, I'm 65. I'm retiring. Well, I got bad news for you. The people who are much smarter than me, they say retirement is 2.5 million is what you need. And that way you won't run out of money. And here we are. Dude, don't get me wrong. You're a good person. You've worked your whole life. You never went on welfare, or maybe only a little bit. You never asked for handouts. You were a single mom. You worked two jobs, three jobs. You finally found a man who was worth, you know, something. And you're, you're, you got this much in the bank if you're lucky. Half of y'all have this much in the bank. Some of y'all don't even have this much. Some of y'all will have 10000 in the bank. Oh, but the Lord will provide. Yeah, yeah, he will. He gave you a book called The Richest Man in Babylon. He provided you a book. He provided you lots of books. He provided you with Think and Grow Rich. He provided you with a skinny Asian. Just because it doesn't come, oh no, Dr. V, I need him to provide me a lottery, the winning numbers. <laughs> well, that's what you want. But baby, maybe that's not what it's worth, what it is. Okay. So obviously, tip number three, and we're gonna um, it's kind of the ones I wanna talk about, is then um, invest. in passive income. Well, I want to tell you half of y'all watching right now has already shut off. The second I said passive income, something about your past or your history is telling you like, oh, you know, that's for rich people. That's too complicated. I'm just simple. I just... You know, that's not for me. Whatever it is. All right. Watching. If you're still watching me, do you have this feeling? <laughs> when Dr. V says invest, oh, there's that word. And then in passive <laughs> income, like, oh, that sounds like cheating. Like, I need to work hard for my, my, my money. Like, what do you mean I can sleep and make money? Like, that, that, that's got to be a lie. That's got to be non-biblical. That's got to be something against the law. All right? Comment if you have this sort of reaction. When, on number three, I said invest in passive income. You, something inside of you flares up and says, I can't do that. That's not for me. Put me in the comment section if that's you. Because that's, this is the one that you need to get over. Of all of this other stuff that Dave Ramsey and Susie Orman tells you, you go, yeah, 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 yeah. But this is the one that's going to change your life. This is the one that's going to take you from poor to rich. And the fact that you feel resistance, you feel resistance to this, that means this is the one that you need to work on. Can I have an amen, please? So I say, pay yourself first. You go, yeah, motherfucker, I pay myself first. You got to save 10%. Oh, yeah, I can save myself 10%. You got to get invested passive income. Oh, no, no, no. That's, that's, not, that's not spiritual, Dr. V. I can't do that. That's, that's too complicated. So here's what you have to, this, but this is what you have to work on, okay? So above average people, Here's the big aha connection for you guys while you're watching this video. Whatever amount of money that you've managed to save, you need to then invest in passive income. This is the way, the way to wealth. I have just given you the roadmap on how to do this, right? I've just distilled it down to something very simple. You've got to take your money and invest it in passive income. Now, how we do that is beyond the scope of this video, but I'm not going to stop there. Let me give you some more hope. What average people will do, 
and you're not average. Let's say they save a little bit. Let's say they let's say you can do this. Dr. V, you don't fucking know me. I'm a superstar. I saved 4800. I saved 5000. I saved 10000. What do average people then do? Here you go. They'll take this money, right? They'll take this 192, this 4800. They'll take this and then they they'll do this to it. But Dr. V you know, and this is disguised as Christmas, right? Holidays, right? Vacations. Dr. V, you're making it sound like life is no fun. You got to have vacation. Dude, I took my family a couple years ago. I took me, Erica, our daughter Mason, and my other daughter Kizzy, four of us, to Disney World in Orlando, Florida. And I was like, it's like $8,000. And Erica got like a cheap hotel. I was like, don't ever get another cheap hotel. And then, and just the flights, the tickets. I was like, I don't know how the average American can afford this. Right? But let me tell you something else. This is your fifth handbag. Your tenth high heel this is the um, this season's clothes style this is your kids this is your nep- nieces and nephews oh let me give you one you're gonna love this one don't you even go there dr. V here he goes here he goes here's your fucking pets I did See, you won't take yourself to a doctor, but you'll take your dog and your cats to the veterinarian if they're sick. You, you, you know, if, if you travel, you'll travel to Motel 6. You'll go on vacation Motel 6, but you'll put your dog into, you know, the doggy daycare where they'll walk them out three times a day. They'll play with them. You know, you'll eat, you'll give yourself fast food, junk food. But you'll buy the hot, the best brand of dog food for your dog or your cats. Am I right? You'll give them fancy feast while you're feasting on the dollar menu. Right? That's what average people do. And what you have to do is break this. Okay. Dr. E, this is, this is depressing. <laughs> I come to you for inspiration, Dr. V. Well, let me give you some hope. Let me give you some hope. Okay. What Dr. V is going to tell you, you know, you feel this resistance. Okay. This, what this means you need to do is learn. Read. Study. That's all that means. Okay. Let me, let me tell you something. Let me ask you a question. When was Dr. V born a surgeon? <laughs> I wasn't born a fucking surgeon. I became a surgeon. I went to school, read the books, got into med school. And wasn't there a time when my attending surgeon gave me the scalpel? The very first time. It's like that Madonna song, the Madonna song right? And Weird Al Yankovic. You, you, know, you remember that Madonna song, Like a Virgin, Like a Virgin, right? And then Weird Al Yankovic like, changed it to like a surgeon cutting for the very first time. That was me. I was a surgeon cutting for the very first time. Like a surgeon. Okay. So I felt bad. I was scared. I was nervous. I pushed back. I had resistance. But I read. I studied. I had attending surgeons who would not let me cut too deep or cut too large or cut cut off the wrong way. I had mentorship. So what the average person says is they says this is too hard. This is too difficult. I don't have time. Who has time? Study, read, learn. I'm just going to go sit by the pool. And they're broke. And they're stressed out at the end of the month. 
But above average people says, this is interesting. I want to become a surgeon. I want to become wealthy. So therefore, I have to push past my resistance. I have to learn. I have to read. I have to study. And so if your life is worth living and worth changing, then, then isn't it worth like putting a few hours? Let's say you went all year and you were so good and you saved up $4,800 in 12 months, right? Is it not worth, right? If you're, if you're going to invest this money in, say, the stock market and it took you 12 months to save this, isn't it worth spending one month reading, studying, finding a mentor, joining a stock investment club? Isn't it worth one month before, before you go invest it in the stock market? Before you go invest this in real estate? Isn't it worth reading a real estate book? That's the push. So, so this is the push. Can I have some ahas? Any aha here? Like, where have you gone wrong in your past life? Where have you gone wrong in the past? You jumped into this deal. Dr. V, I jumped into this deal. I lost my shirt. I jumped into this deal. I, uh, you know, these, these scammers took advantage of me, you know. And I did a video the other day about being scammed. So it, it happens to me too, right? Uh, I'm so embarrassed. I lost everything. This person sold me a lemon. This person did this. Like, like okay, you learned your lesson. But if you're going to spend 65, I'm sorry, 40 years of your life working, shouldn't you sit down and read a little bit? Study a little bit about finances. Dr. V, finances are not my thing. I just don't, I know, nothing's your thing. I get it, you're special. Dieting is not your thing. You know, uh, exercise is not your thing. Green smoothies are not your thing. I get it. You have a lot of not my things. But you're broke. And you're overweight. And you're unhappy. At some point, didn't you sit there and go, I got to change this. I got to do something different. I'm telling you the roadmap from being poor to rich is this right here. Take whatever you can save, invest it in passive income vehicles. What are those, Dr. V? Well, that's for another video another day. But the fact that you felt resistance to me to it means it doesn't matter what I tell you. Who understands what I'm saying? I can tell you right now, real estate. And you go, oh, fucking real No, no, no. I can sit in and tell you Bitcoin. Oh, no, 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 fucking cryptocurrency. No, no, no. I can tell you, fine art. Oh, who's got money for that? That's for rich people. See, the fact that you feel resistance means that the message, and actually, I should end on this. This is amazing. The fact that you feel resistance means you won't hear anything after this. Anything that follows after this, you won't hear it. I can sit here and say the way is little houses. The way is mutual funds. The way is a well-diversified portfolio. The way is index funds, Dr. V. The way is loan to be the bank. The way is mobile homes. The way is beachfront property. The way is, it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter what I say after passive income because you won't hear any of it because you can't get past your resistance. If I didn't get past Fear of making a decision. If you don't get past the fear of blood, you will never become a doctor. You will never become a surgeon. If you don't get past the resistance of hearing passive income and believing that it's possible for you, that you can do it, nothing that follows that matters. Can I have an amen? All right. If you love this video, please hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time. Thank you, guys.